Thank you for tuning in to Digital Learning Day, brought to you by the Canvas Casters, the official podcast of instructor makers of Canvas LMS. Our next session is going to be bonkers. It's going to be bonks. It's going to be lit. It's going to be off the chain. It's going to be off the rails. It's going to be off the hook. It's going to be any other term that the kids may or may not be using these days to talk about something that is awesome. Yeah. So we've, th this is probably the most folks we've ever had on a live stream at one time. Um, there are six of us on the screen. That There's a lot happening. Uh, we do want to make sure all of you folks know a quick note. If you're watching live, you're joining us on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, all of the places. Um, this is going to be kind of a unique session. Marcus and I have never done this before. Uh, and we've been running live streams for like two years at Instructure. And, and when I came into the fold, it had a very structured process. We have gone off the rails. We are doing what's called a demo slam. And uh, Marcus will tell you all about the particulars and what the demo slam is. But if you've ever been to an ed tech conference before, you may have seen these at the end. Uh, but we want the same type of engagement as we, if we were in person, right? So react in the chat, ask questions, leave uh, you know where you're from inside the comment section on wherever you're joining us from. Uh, I can't wait. These are some of my all-time favorite people, Marcus, as you know, these folks that we spend uh, a lot of time with communicating and collaborating with all across the United States. Uh, man, our first ever live demo slam on Canvas. I am punching all the buttons, so I will be very <laughs> honest with everyone out there. This might get ugly, so just <laughs> bear with us. Uh, yes, so... If you're familiar, I'll give you sort of a, the basics of a, of a demo slam. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we've, we've basically gone out, we've found a handful of Jedis uh, with Canvas, and we said the challenge, if you choose to accept it, is to demonstrate something awesome, some tips and tricks, basically whatever you want, as long as it's in Canvas or relating to Canvas, and you got three minutes. Um, and as you well know, as educators, you put a time limit on anything, things get crazy. Um, you know how you know that happens in your classrooms with students. Uh, I used to I used to put timers on everything, even if I didn't care about having a timer, because putting a timer on the board, all of a sudden the kids are like, oh my god, oh, I gotta. It was urgent, um, but three minutes is not a lot of time, and uh, we're asking these folks to kind of show some of what they know. Um, and it's, you know, it's all in good fun. It's honestly, it's a great opportunity for folks to share great ideas and thoughts. And for you folks at home, uh, tuning in from work, wherever you may be, uh, to get some really cool ideas and try to, you know, sort of enact them uh, coming up uh, in the next few days even. Uh, but I'm really excited. Uh, as Eddie said, we're going <laughs> to we're going to see how it goes uh, and just bear with us as, as we work through it. But um, there's a little bit of competition here. And, and that's the other thing that Ed, Eddie was sort of mentioning. We want to hear from you in the chat um, because not only do we want to hear from you throughout, but you're going to be voting. So folks uh, that are tuning in live, you know, make sure you comment in the chat. Uh, we're going to take those votes to decide who is going to be the ultimate first annual, first ever Canvas demo slam live stream champion. The name's under construction. I'm going to... I'm going to put down some cones. I'm going to throw out some flares. We're going to get to work on that, put on a hard hat and figure out what we're going to call it. Um, but for now, that's what we're going to do. Uh, so we have got some experts here. Uh, and we're going to start things off with now entering the ring. Wait, let's get ready to rumble. They're never going to let us do this. They're again. never going to do it. They're never going to let us back on here. <laughs> now entering the ring is Stephanie, the beach bum, Bean. Why? Wait for it. I'm going to tell you. She is from Newport News Public Schools in Virginia. She's a Chick-fil-A loving boy mom of two. She serves as a virtual learning specialist who, when not supporting teachers, can be found at the beach. You can find me at the beach. See what I did there? I'm super hip, you guys. The kids don't even know how cool I am. Eddie, put three minutes on the clock. All right. Stephanie, 
The floor is yours when you are ready. We will start the clock. Show us what you got. All right, first things first, I tried to hide all the million Canvas courses I'm in and narrow it to the two I was gonna focus on in these quick three minutes. This year, Newport News Public Schools started a brand new ninth through 12th grade virtual learning academy, and we needed a place to bring all of our stakeholders together. We wanted to be sure that we were keeping everything in one platform, like get rid of those dialers that go home, get rid of those websites, keep everything in Canvas because that is where our students are living truly in this virtual environment. So I first wanted to point out this faculty support course that I created in order to communicate regularly with all of our teachers. So you see up at the top, I even have my building principal participating in a Canvas course, which, you know, is impressive at this point. He sends out a weekly announcement to keep all of his teachers up to date. You'll notice that I have five different modules here at the bottom, Stay some that are pretty constant with just basic information, but some that I update on a weekly or monthly basis. So this module right here is kind of a, um, online office, my um, virtual learning support office where teachers can come and get answers to all of their questions. I started building it during, of course, the COVID-19 pandemic, but it has only grown from there. The other module that we use regularly are these faculty updates. So this is where my teachers complete professional development. We use this both synchronously and asynchronously. You'll see about once a month, I try to model best practices for my teachers. I try to include those discussions, those assignments. We do some group activities. This is really where our VLA staff comes to learn and grow and reach out to each other as a support. So in that same breath, we come created a student support course and all of our students were registered in this by section so we can definitely tailor information to different grade levels again you'll notice i have lots of key stakeholders participating the current announcements up at the top are from our school counselor so even our school counselor our support staff is involved in this canvas page we can send information to specific grade levels about sats or testing um, and again, our principal sends a weekly announcement to students and parents. So again, this is great because all of our parent observers are part of this course as well. So this is truly our home base. It's just like visiting a school in person, but they come to this Canvas course. So just like they would walk into the main office or to our counseling office, they click on that button and access that module. We also have a direct link to our website so students can view that if necessary. We have our underclassmen and our upperclassmen with different resources that are particular to their grades. And something that's really unique for our VLA is that we have students from across our school division, all five high schools, come to our VLA. So we wanted to have a place for them to re <laughs> You get the idea. Thanks for having me. Oh wait, we're not paying for that Google beeper to go off. I, I don't want to throw. I don't want to get us in trouble here. Uh, fantastic. Lots of folks love the homepage. Fantastic use of Canvas. Buy-in from leadership. Canvas is a one-stop shop. One -stop shop. Marcus always bring in the energy. The energy is exactly <laughs> what I needed today. Send love. Uh, sending love from North Carolina. Uh, thank you, Stephanie. That was fantastic. Yeah, Great reach job. out if you're interested in trying for your school. I'm happy to help because this is the third school that I've set this up in since the COVID-19 pandemic. And it's a lot of work, but it's totally worth it for your school stakeholders. Woo, absolutely. So the bar is set. The bar is set, Woo! Marcus. The gauntlet has been dropped. Now, here, here, here's, and I was typing the notes, and I was going to mute my mic so you guys didn't hear me tap, tap, tapping away. But here are some, some takeaways, because here's the thing. Three minutes is fast for the person that's demonstrating. Three minutes is fast for you guys, right, yeah. to, like, to soak all that in and like take notes. So um, here's what I got. Leadership buy-in. You guys yep. know how I feel about that. Um, having building leaders, facilitating things and doing things right there in Canvas, sort of shoulder to shoulder with teachers is huge, okay? Uh, PD for staff, Eddie and I have both uh, d done that, lived it, uh, and, and it was one of the best parts of our, our work in, in public education was the ability to you know create within Canvas uh, in, in not only for students, but for teachers as learners, and then being able to provide that in multiple ways. So you saw Stephanie had, she had, you know, synchronous and asynchronous. She had resources available. It's all about providing support, 
but in honestly, I, in a number of ways, because that way we can make sure that somebody's got something that they can latch on to. Not everybody wants large group, not everybody wants small group or individual. So we've got choices. Uh, so I love that. I love yeah, the counselors. So let's, let's bring Stephanie back. Yeah, in. yeah. Have her have her take a take a bow. Stephanie, great job. <laughs> Thank um, you. Thank there's a lot you. of buttons. There's a lot of buttons happening on my end. So if things look <laughs> sketchy, it's because I'm clicking too many things. Uh, I didn't mean to get rid of her so fast, but she's back. Take your bow, Stephanie. Thank uh, we you. Have so, Thank you're you. Gonna, if you are here for this content, oh, man. Yes. We, we have got the lineup. So uh, we appreciate <laughs> you, Stephanie. Thank you. Uh, hashtag blame Eddie. We're going to get yes. that trending. Hashtag Ooh. blame Eddie. Uh, last two things. Nice last two things, <laughs> last two things on Stephanie. Last two things on Stephanie's uh, demo slam. Uh, the counselors... That's such an, uh, it, it's a niche that I think a lot of schools really can capitalize on. It is providing some strength and some empowerment for your, for your social work and counseling departments within your buildings to, uh, to facilitate communications through Canvas. Cause that's, they have a lot of folks to communicate with and to share information with. Uh, and then finally, great design, right? Neat, clean, easy, you know, simple buttons to push. Um, you know, there, there's, there's no need to, you know, overdress, uh, your, your home pages. And so it was really good stuff. Uh, so keep Stephanie in mind folks, when you're ready to vote now entering the fray, if you will, entering the fracas, entering the octagon, Hildy drum beat Pardo. She's the Canvas system admin for Arlington Public Schools in VA. She's a proud grandma. I don't know how she's a grandma. There's just no way. She's the proud grandma of a 16-month-old baby girl who is healthy these days, unlike <laughs> recently, thank goodness. Um, she's recovering nicely. When Hildy isn't at work, she's still working out as a Zumba instructor. And she is a member of the all-women Afro-Brazilian Samba Reggae drum band in DC called Batala Washington. Woo! Let's go. She has told everyone in nearby cubicles to zip it because she's about to throw down. Um, so Eddie, put right. the time on the clock. Here we go. Hildy, right. let's see it. All right, so I'm attempting to do six tips in three minutes. Um, first, if you find yourself scrolling to find your course, do yourself a favor, drag it up to the top, put your most uh, used courses, most frequently used courses at the top, and you will save yourself some time. You may have to reorder these um, during the school year as things change, um, but that is a very quick way to do that. Um, if you find yourself that you suddenly have to change, something's come up and you have to change an assignment due date um, quickly, you can do it from the calendar. Simply drag and drop, and you can save yourself that time just by changing the due date that way. Note that that does not change your access, uh, your availability dates. Um, but if you want to save yourself some clicks, how about avoiding entering availability dates um, at all? Um, they don't have as much functionality as due dates do. Due dates um, are connected to various areas of Canvas. It puts, it, puts the assignments on the calendar. It puts it on the to-do list. It puts it on the coming up list. It puts it in the syllabus tool if you use a syllabus tool. It plops it into the correct quarter. So if you want to filter your assignments um, index page or if you want to uh, filter out other assignments, on your gradebook, um, putting the due dates will help you filter by quarter and save you some time. Um, the other thing about availability dates is that it blocks students from submitting uh, before or after. So if you wanna give students more opportunities to learn at their pace and succeed, maybe consider not adding those dates and saving yourself a few clicks or post these dates for a much wider window of time. Next, announcements. Uh, do you ever want to post an announcement ahead of time? So it's not a time saver, but it's like a time shifter. You don't want to um, maybe post, get up really early to post an announcement. Do it at a different time. Um, I use this a lot when I know I may not be 
in the next day or if I don't want notifications to go out at an odd hour. So I type my announcement and I check the delay posting. I make sure you have the correct date and time and you can continue editing or modifying this announcement until the time passes. In SpeedGrader, when grading in SpeedGrader, if you find that you're scrolling through a long list to find who has submitted, you can change that by going to this dial right here. You've got some options and you can change it from student name alphabetical to submission status. And that will bump all the, all the um, submissions up to the top and you won't have to scroll. While, you, while we're here, let me show that you can hide student names in SpeedGrader. Uh, Hilde, ah! Hilde, Hilde how far were you? How many did we get in? How many did we get in? Five of Five? Hey, nice. Pretty lenient around here. <laughs> right, right, right. You almost, you almost did it, but there's voting involved, so I'm not about to. I'm not about to have Greg Bagby call me in the middle of the night tonight and say <laughs> I didn't win because you right. gave Hildy four minutes. Competitive advantages. <laughs> yeah. Uh, woo. Let's. Can we just take a second and breathe? Oh man. Like, it was a lot coming in hot. Lots of amazing, amazing, quick tips. And that's, I mean, that's exactly what I was talking about earlier. Same deal. Like those of you tuning in right now, just sit back and enjoy it. You're going to have to watch it again later on YouTube. You're going to have to go back and take notes and be like, okay, now what did she say? No. Okay. Now let me, okay, let me go do that. You're going to have to review for sure, because that was some rapid fire stuff. Um, Eddie, what was your, what was your favorite, uh, fr from that, from that five there that we got? You know, so many folks, um, we never the calendar is such an underused feature. I think when we first started using it, like I don't even, I don't even think I touched it as a topic to my teachers. Um, and then to know that like there are districts out there, our good friend, um, Sean from the how to canvas folks, like he says, calendar drag and drop was one of the features that convinced us to basically buy canvas. Like that's how <laughs> easy it is to move from one, you know, from one day to another for me, like, Com completely the number one top feature in calendar that I think would convince a lot of people to use it. Right. So you do all your stuff, then you can go into calendar and move things around. If you have to be flexible, uh, definitely something that is, is my favorite. Yeah. It's the, like a, a few people said, like drag and drop, baby, drag yep. and drop. <laughs> it doesn't yep. get any easier than that. Uh, I also, there was a lot of when, when Hildy was talking about, um, the av available to available from times and dates um lot people were getting fired up in the chat like supporting uh supporting yeah. that uh and, and i would tend to agree i found that um when i first started using the available uh dates and times uh i found myself wanting in the, in the early years back in the day it was a wednesday um <laughs> but way back in the day i remember trying to really like be very strict about that uh, because I thought it was a way for me to kind of control things. And, but what I found over time, which is exactly what, what Hildy was saying is, hey, you know what? Let's be flexible. Uh, let's open those dates up. And hey, sometimes you just don't need them at all. Um, let's let's just yeah. not even go there. Uh, so I love that that, because what that is is a student-centered decision. It is not about the teacher there. That is about students. Uh, so I love that. Um, I do love the delay post for announcements. Uh, that's something that a lot of folks, like you said, it's a, uh, it's a time shift, um, not necessarily a, a necessarily saving clicks, but you know, why not? If you have it on mind or at top of mind right now, why not go ahead and say, you know what, this needs to go out next week or next Tuesday. I'm going to do it now. It's on my to-do schedule, pop it in there and you feel good about it. And I, I just love that because that is being efficient with the time and people the speed grader hack there with the sorting <laughs> people already love the speed grader people already love speed grader and and to just sort of remind or even point out for new users like you can sort this stuff in yep. different ways let's go all right hildy final bow uh if you'd like to bribe anybody at this point now's a great time lots of votes out there <laughs> to get lots of folks uh being a part but thank you so much we appreciate it Thanks. Yeah, it was fun. Um, yeah, I'll just sneak in my number six in there, and it was rubrics. Whoa, um, whoa, 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 <laughs> no, you're out of here. Look at this. 
get her out of here. He booted her right out of the. Oh man! I'm telling you, Greg's gonna be calling me. He's like, "Hey, I had this figured out, and and I got booted because I couldn't get three minutes in." I can't right, believe Marcus. that just happened. Woo. Ooh. Man, Eddie, Eddie's coming in. He's bringing the heat, folks. All right. I got to click he, the buttons. It, right, he's clicking the buttons. He's running. He's driving. He's driving. He's driving the bus. He's clicking the buttons. He's he's very obnoxious about his cutoff time. I don't know if you noticed the eh, very violent. Um, but hey, this is competition at its finest, right? You're out of here. Right. You're out of here. Out of here. All right, next he'll up. Be, he'll be, you know we love you, but we've got somebody next up. Hold on. Right. <laughs> Our really next correct. competitor, right. Eddie. Are you ready for this? Oh, 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 oh no. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and introduce, but it looks, yeah, yeah. looks like he's a... Uh, uh, Cody uh, Edwards, Mr. Edwards, yes, yes. Oh, God. Eddie's <laughs> just throwing me under the bus. Um, I, I need you to... Oh, my bad, wait. Oh. He's always on the phone, folks. He's always on the phone, making, making deals over there. Mr. Bagby's <laughs> always busy. Moving and shaking. Uh, our next competitor is Greg Choo Choo Gig City Bagby, system administrator for Hamilton County Schools in Chattanooga, Tennessee. He plays the bass guitar, which let's just let's just elephant in the room. Coolest dudes in the world, coolest women in the world play bass guitar because it's just like you just make cool faces, you just do the thing, and then on top of it. When he's not strumming the bass, he's playing the trumpet. Let's yep. go. And he's doing all of that while wearing bow ties. He's legendary for his bow tie collection. Uh, he didn't even need to rock one today. He was like, I'm going, I'm going casual. Oh, okay. We took off. He took it off. He wanted to be flexible. Yes. I, I yeah, yeah. Flexible. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. Uh, and he's also got a wonderful family and two kids. Uh, and Eddie. We're ready, I'm ready for Mr. Bagby, Mr. Greg Bagby, to to show us a little bit about some stuff. I'm not right. gonna I'm not gonna reveal the secret, but we got three minutes on the clock. Let's Go ahead, Greg. Okay, so um, I apologize uh, first to you gentlemen. It wasn't really Corey Edwards on the phone. Uh, <laughs> it was no one, so don't worry about that. <laughs> anyway, uh, one of the things that I love about <laughs> love about Canvas is the ability to create. Oh, wait. I have three courses that have the exact same name. That's awfully peculiar. That's because we can create blueprint courses. I absolutely love blueprint courses. Uh, for our HCS policy and compliance, I know who loves policy and compliance. I don't. But we've created a compliance course so that uh, all of the schools can have their own course in their own instance, so to speak. So. If you're not familiar with blueprints, what you do is set up a parent course, and then you can actually connect those courses. As I click in the right corner, I have associations, and all of these associations, yes, they're all the same course name, but they're in different subgroups or subcategories. Um, and we'll just click in the course, and inside this course, let's go back to the top. Inside this course, I place in, of course, modules for bloodborne pathogens and bullying and prevention and all the things that we have to do. But what we can do is set up one course and then have it pushed out to where all the principals are the administrators of those courses. You don't, it doesn't have to be a compliance course. It doesn't. You can do this with, we're actually doing this with our schools that we have specialized schools. We call them future ready, not like the other future ready. Sorry. Uh, but we have these future ready schools and what we've done is we've created a pathway where eighth graders can learn about the different schools because we have programs in uh, most of our actually all of our high schools and they can choose which program they want but they go through the course um, and they say oh I want to do this I want to do that but we set the course up as a blueprint so we create one course we send it out to the schools and then the schools can customize it for themselves but it has all the content that we want and we can tell it what to sync. So we can sync content back and forth. Well, back and forth. We throw things to their course, and that's the stuff that stays. They can change up the look if they want to, but we don't We don't bother with that. We let them do that. Yes, we'll give you the shell and the materials, and you get to change it up the way you want it to make it so more personalized for you. Uh, and that one thing is I was going through a couple of different things, but as Hildy was talking with her 
canvas shirt on and her canvas pandas all around and her canvas for dummies book in the background. No, no one saw that, Hildy. Uh -uh. <laughs> Just so you know. Uh, but <laughs> she was getting into grades and talking about uh, the things going on. One of the things that I like about the grade book inside of Canvas, when I first got in, I was like, oh, I got to scroll. I got to see all oh, what are the grades. You know, if you go up to the total, look, ellipses, they appeared. Nah. Like, oh. <laughs> but you can move it to the front. Is there a boom? It's in the front. <laughs> okay. All right. Great job. Woo. 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 Man, I'm exhausted. There. I am exhausted. <laughs> so like good. Just ran a marathon right. with, with it, Gig City here. Right. It's here like it was like a forty yard dash. Uh, it, w w the, here's the thing, though. It, for those of you that are familiar with blueprint courses, like he, Greg just made blueprints sound so easy, and they are. And it's such a profoundly impactful way. Um, particularly <laughs> if, as as Greg uh, pointed out, like if you want to, if you have consistent content. Um, you know, like it's so great to be able to push that content out to multiple, uh, you know, classes um, or course content to multiple teachers. Um, Greg, why don't you just real quick, because I know that I hear this a lot. Quickly tell us what the difference between a template and a blueprint is. A template is just like you were saying, it's like a shell of a course. A blueprint, it's more than a shell. It's a shell with some meat in it. It actually has the tools that you want to use. So if you have, say, you there's specific modules that you want everyone to use and have, you push that out through the blueprint. And you can make mid-course corrections and then just sync it back up. And the blueprint will send it out to those main courses and boom, there you go. You've updated it on the fly. Because we can put out these plans and we have all these ideas, but if we don't have a way that we can change it up, especially if we're doing a massive course across a district uh, with our 86 or no 86 76 schools and i want to make a change oh let's change this due date on this one thing change the date resync boom it's there nice nice should that be the tagline of canvas boom it's there <laughs> I mean, All right, Greg, it that, you're out of here. We isn't it that easy? Time. He's out I did. Here. I did. I did kind of give him extra time. <laughs> He's out of folks here. Out there, folks out there in TV land, okay, do not give him any extra credit. It's nope. my fault. I, 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 I gave him extra credit opportunity. Um, do not let that skew your vote. But outstanding, outstanding stuff about Blueprint courses. A little extra credit. Uh, there on the end, comparing Must blueprints to templates. Must be stricken from the record officially. <laughs> Everything that he said past the three minutes is stricken from the record. That's right. We've uh, redacted. It's been redacted. <laughs> if you watch right, The Morgan. Office, you know. All right. Man, we are just clicking through these. This is awesome. I know. Did and we have, and Carrie. We had, somebody, we had somebody pop up here at the. What? what? We have a surprise, not a surprise, a delayed. Carrie's in the building. I'm here. All right. She, uh, uh, word on the street, I can't confirm or, nor deny, but there, there's talk that there was running, sprinting to oh. find a location. Uh, Carrie was like, I've got things to do. And um, I wanted to give, oh, oh, she's got her t shirt. I didn't She's even also... have time to put my shirt on. I was sprinting and running. I didn't want to get it sweaty. So just for the She's record, out of breath. I still had swag involved, so I've got, got mine yeah. as well. Anything nice. for a vote these days. I mean, just shameless, you know, <laughs> just shameless. Well, let me introduce to you Carrie Gardner. Now entering the ring. Carrie, what's... What's my Twitter handle? Gardner. She's an instructional coach hailing from Kansas City, Kansas. Her Canvas claim to fame is creating the Canvas for Elementary Facebook group, which is currently a resounding 112,000 members. Let that sink in. Let that sink as a lot of educators. <laughs> when it isn't snowing or blistering hot, her weekends typically consist of donuts and playgrounds, which sounds like a delightful combination. Uh, as she's chasing around her three kids, because really there isn't much else to do in Kansas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> her words, her words, not mine. 
Uh, Carrie, welcome. I hope I've saved you some time, but get your breath from that sprint. Let's see what you got. Eddie, three minutes on the clock. Three minutes on the clock. I'm ready. Oh, sorry. Oh, gosh. Here All right. we go. I'm like super stressed about this because okay, I actually go. Need, I need to like, <laughs> like not end on time. So I'm like really, really worried about this, but it's going to be fine. It's going to be great. And you guys are going to totally pick me, right? Okay. So um, <laughs> speaking of picking things, I'm going to be sharing with you today some mustard and pickles. Yes, that sounds disgusting. It's nothing like donuts and playgrounds, um, but... Hopefully by the end of this, maybe it will show you a way you can use Canvas with your littles. Because clearly I have an elementary, for Can Canvas for Elementary Facebook group. So I couldn't not share about an elementary way that you can use Canvas. So choice boards and must do may do are staples in every elementary classroom. And so here we've taken that and we've made it digital. So you'll see that we always start with our learning targets. Um, it's so important even at the youngest age to really spell out what your outcomes are for a unit, for a lesson. And so we always wanna include those and Canvas makes it so easy to put those right at the beginning of a module. And then the student's gonna move through this module and here you will see there is a must do with some mustard activity and you'll see that we have them completing a seesaw activity which is another platform but here we're allowing our students to launch in canvas go out into the world of educational things and then come back and actually complete something in canvas so we've got a video we want them to watch they're going to go do this activity and then this is the nice part and i'm going to show you how to do this in just a minute is you can actually add requirements so that the student can't move on until they have done this must do activity. So I'm going to hop back into my module and real quick demo how I can do that. So here I've got this nice um, module and I'm going to go in and edit that module and I'm going to make it so my student must complete all of these requirements and they have to move through them in sequential order. So they have to do those must-do activities in the order I want them to do them before they get to go and pick what they want to do. So here I have them all just as mark as done. I don't necessarily need them to mark the learning targets as done, so I'm gonna get rid of that one. But I do want them to mark their must-do activities before they can move on. And I'm gonna mark this one as I actually want them to submit the assignment. So here I've added these requirements in place so that they must do their things before they get to their may do. So now I'm gonna update that module. And if I go into student view, then you'll see I've got a nice, uh, nice. Uh, these are all grayed out now, and I've got this nice mark is done button here at the bottom. So they have to click that mark is done before they can move into the next piece. And here I've got another must do activity. I've even got some offline things I'd like them to do. I want to make them a prediction in their purple notebook. And then they're able to, again, mark that as done, maybe go out into the world, read something and come back to Canvas and then move on to their next piece. And the nice part is if they go to click this next button and they haven't, ooh, marked is done, then it will make them go back. Wow. <laughs> Woo. So here we are. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> a really fast amount of time. All right. Fast. So good. Woo. Oh there my go. gosh. Oh my gosh. Carrie is my, has been, uh, Carrie and, and uh, her partner in crime, Lindsay, uh, have been a go-to for, for both Eddie and I to learn more about, uh, you know, Canvas with, with uh, young learners uh, in the elementary. Uh, of course, again, Carrie is uh, a co-originator, uh, if you will, of the elementary Facebook group. So if you're an elementary teacher and, and you're interested uh, and you're on the Facebook or Meta, as the, well, I don't even think the kids would call it that anymore, um, that thing. Uh, then definitely check it out. Uh, some some takeaways there. Eddie, what you got? Yeah, you know, um, I, I put this in the chat too. Obviously, Carrie has been just a fantastic resource for all of our elementary teachers for, for so long. Um, and I, I think, you know, if being a part of that Facebook group is important to you and, and discussing the things that you're learning in that group, it, it's just been fantastic. I put in the chat that a lot of these folks that you're seeing today, Carrie included, have been on the podcast, right? Um, so unfortunately you know, for them. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I was on the finale. <laughs> okay. All right. You're out of here, Carrie. You're trying to get extra votes. Uh, 
I'm just, I'm just kidding. We'll bring her Woo! back. Hey, um, you know, great work uh, on on all the things that you're doing. Obviously, the the choice boards and outcomes for littles. I, I just think the requirements in modules. You'll see a lot of conversation and comments in the chat about yeah. those types of things. Just so fantastic. And um, you know, another another great demo. It's gonna be hard to choose. If I'm in the audience right now Whew. and I'm watching this, I'm a little nervous on which way I'm leaning. So right, right. I'd be calling family if I was involved in this. Hey, I need you to jump on real quick and throw my name out there. <laughs> Another one on the phone. So important VIP status. Greg's on the phone. Carrie's on the phone. Uh, I, I honestly, I love the requirements and prerequisites and modules. Um, you know, especially, you know, sometimes you do have, uh, sometimes teachers are a little bit reluctant, if especially if you're, they're new to Canvas. Um, and, and oftentimes there's this, I would say it's a misunderstanding, but there's this belief that somehow in a, in a virtual or, or even blended space that like somehow I as the teacher uh, have lost all control uh, and I have no ability to uh, sort of, you know, for, there's a better word, but I have no ability to dictate the terms of what's happening uh, within my course. But I think uh, requirements and prerequisites are a great way to do that within that module. Um, because you are able, especially with the younger learners, to say it's this, then this, then this, then this, and we're clicking next. And I think that's just a really great intuitive way to sort of build a module. Uh, I know I did that uh, exact thing even with high school students. Um, and, and I like that you can you can decide like every it's all or nothing. Um, you have some variety within there. Um, so lots of talk in the chat. People are talking about voting. But uh, I hate to tell you folks, we've got one more competitor coming to the stage, coming right in, our buddy, Mr. Yoder. There he is. There he is. Okay, stop. See, this is this is all part. This is all part. <laughs> just a little, of, just a little casual reading. Just yeah, nothing, nothing to see here, people. <laughs> nothing to see here. That's How enough. we doing? That's enough. Good. How are you? I'm living the dream. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. All right, Marcus. Awesome. Awesome. We're really excited to have you here. Uh, Mr. Jonathan Yoder is here to close out our first ever live stream Canvas Demo Slam. Uh, our final con contestant to enter the Canvas Demo Slam ring is Jonathan. You're a funny guy. Yoder, tech coach for Owen J. Roberts High School in southwestern Pennsylvania. He's a stand-up comedian in his spare time and loves short walks on the beach. I heard from... Not him. Very, very so, short. Very, very short. All right, Eddie. Three yeah. minutes on the clock. We're ready. Hold on, Mr. Yoder. When you're ready, let's let's see what you got. All right. So first off, I think the most important thing is is consistency and clarity, and we want to reduce cognitive load for the teacher and the student. So here's an example of a simplified homepage. I'll direct you first to the navigation menu. I think it's really important that we control that environment. Uh, so that kids don't have dead ends there that are leading them to places that are unintentional. Uh, so that's easy in the course settings. There's a navigation tab. You just swoop them to the bottom. You hit save. You're done. Other things within that course settings, there are apps and there's an amazing redirect tool because like Carrie was mentioning, if you're sending them out into the educational world and there are certain things that they go to regularly, like you know, resources, then use that redirect tool to create a little menu there so that those tools are there. Uh, step three, use stuff like Canvas and even Google Slide, I'm sorry, Canva or Google Slides to create a nice little banner. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, uh, just adds a nice little piece. And my favorite tip is what I call the Google Billboard. So I'm sure there's a equivalent within Microsoft, but this is a really nice way to simplify the home page keep things above the fold and now it becomes a daily agenda that once i embed it uh, once i use the google drive tool to embed it on my page i only have to go to the google slide to update every day so then i just drag whatever i want to number one and that's the position and now i can simplify navigation because i can create links that they can click directly to assignments and that's huge I mean, we want three clicks or less. That's just a common UX experience, and that is huge. Another thing I'd highly recommend is at the building or department level, let's get some templates in place for assignment holders. I see all sorts of inconsistencies on the information we give kids for assignments, and this is huge. I worked with Quality Matters and got certified through them 
on having a system in place for like the pedagogy of online learning and just having something in place for teachers to use is huge. Uh, and then one thing I would also recommend is having an orientation course for your students. Uh, this could be school wide or even within your course, uh, but there is a passport to Canvas that you can really kind of edit and make your own, which is ready made with huge pieces to go. Now, I'm also an outside the box kind of guy. Uh, so one of the things we used the last two years is we had an art show. So we wanted to have a digital art show. All these art students, we used to hang them in the hallways and people walked by and it was a great event couldn't do that anymore. So what did we do? We created the categories here. We used that same Google slide trick I just talked about to have it be a slideshow with all of the students' works. They could vote there through a Google form. Uh, it was a really cool piece. And sports teams also love using Canvas. Uh, I'm the coach. I was the coach for baseball for years. We actually taped our coach doing the signs and then gave out Canvas quizzes for them to figure out what he was signing. Ah, oh my goodness. <laughs> Let's oh, go. That's so much. That's so much stuff in three minutes. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> handle it. We have, we've had Yoder on the podcast, right? Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. long enough. Not long episode. enough. It was, it was a short, it was a short stint, but we're going to, yeah. we're going to, we're going to make it happen. Listen, three. That's the thing. You're getting so much in three minutes. Imagine if you sat down and listened to a 45, just shameless plug, just shameless plug to just, the campus casters, obviously, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, it, just good stuff, man. Always. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, the, so here's, here's my takeaway, Eddie. I won't take them all. Here's, here's my takeaway. Uh, I got a couple. Consistency and clarity is a given. Um, and, and I think that it's just, it goes into that mentality where it's kind of hard to rein it in, right? When you get the hang of things in Canvas and you start getting kind of excited about designing things and you get into Canva and you start building things or you're using Google Slides, it's really easy to go overboard. Uh, and so I love that like we can use those tools to enhance what's happening in Canvas, but we want to still main, make sure that the focus is on consistency and clarity for students. So I love that. Uh, he did drop cognitive load, the term cognitive load, which I'm always a big fan of, of discussing uh, because it's super important uh, when, when we're talking about what's happening on screens in front of students uh, students' faces. Um, what about you, Eddie? What, what what was a takeaway that you had? Listen, that redirect tool is hot. Um, and yeah. it's it, it's something that's been a part, I believe, of the um, of the of the platform for a really long time. It's the first thing anybody ever showed me yep. um, <laughs> when it comes to an LTI. And I, I just every time I see it, I'm like, that is the that's one of the coolest things Canvas has like in its in its tool belt. So totally agree. I, re I remember. I don't know. I mean, I bet it was, I bet it was five years ago, five, six years ago, at least when I first heard of redirect and it was like, I was, but then I was going crazy. I had all sorts of stuff. I had like, I was using like four different redirects, uh, in the nav bar to get kids to different places. Um, but yeah, it's such a, it's such like, it's like the Swiss army knife that's sort of hidden there, uh, for folks to use, uh, such good stuff. Uh, Mr. Yoder, we appreciate you. Well yeah. done, man. I am just, <sighs> my heart is full right like <laughs> this is here's the thing folks like when when we when we're able to sort of get folks together um eddie and i always say you know we we're our job is to get the smart people in the room yeah. and then let them talk right. uh, and so it's such a blessing for us to get to, to have this opportunity to share uh in in the the awesome ideas that these folks uh have and continue to leverage within their buildings and their their yeah. own courses and their districts um we are gonna have to figure out how someone is going to be deemed the winner yeah um, well here's so I, I think we just do it pretty quickly like here's the moment right we're gonna ask everyone in the chat if Woo. you're joining us we have lots of folks joining us live facebook youtube <laughs> twitter linkedin all the places so uh, this is your chance um we need you to just comment the name of the person you believe is deserving of and the don't first forget ever <laughs> yoder's Canvas flexing oh slam <laughs> live stream um yeah we're just making sure there's no other you know there's no other uh, intrinsic factors here anybody I, i'm sure greg has been on the phone on the horn with people like jump on i need your vote <laughs> And don't uh, forget would, Stephanie. Don't forget Stephanie. She Stephanie, had to leave early. She had to leave, so she's not yep. on the screen. 
But here's the here's the chance, right? Here's your chance. Make the vote in the chat. Um, let's leave this open for the day, Marcus, so we can go back and, and tally up votes. We're not gonna we're not gonna just tell you a winner today. We're gonna wait because Ooh. we want you to join us. Let's go to the board for the eight fifteen <laughs> session tonight on Digital <laughs> Learning Day. Happy Tuesday, right? I love I love that Eddie's like got the dry erase in the back and he he's really trying to like and eh, we're gonna break out the telestrator here and as you can see here <laughs> and if I'm gonna circle this then boom he's like he's channeling the the late great John Madden with his uh, his to do list for the day yeah uh, but yeah, yeah. I, I love that Eddie let's let's leave it open we've got another cool. session coming up this uh, this evening at eight fifteen Eastern time um, and, and we'll just let the votes pile up you folks competitors. Yeah. Now's the time to call in all your favors. Call in all your favors. Um, it, yep. Again, Eddie said, friends and family, give them, give them a buzz. Um, but we'll we'll sort of let that that build. And then uh, what do you think? Are we going to, will we announce it at the 815 yeah. session? Let's all right. announce it. We're going to start the 815 by announcing the winner. Uh, so if you'll join us for the 815, you'll find out who won. Uh, and they're going to win, uh, I, I think, a pretty cool prize pack, I think. Um, we've got We've got some swag potentially we're gonna send out there so hi right, guys appreciate you as always thank you so much rock stars all in this group stephanie couldn't be with us also a rock star you can follow them on twitter most of them have their their ad hashtags or if you just search them on uh twitter or facebook or any of the social media platforms they are all um here to help so thank you guys so much for joining us marcus wraps up another session Whew. we've got one more that's two of three not gonna lie I have scheduled a nap. <laughs> I have scheduled. I have it on my to-do list. I won't share my screen, but I will. I can assure you that nap is on my to-do list between now and eight fifteen because uh, I'm an old man. Of course you have. That's all I'm That's gonna right. say. All right, guys. <laughs> hey, join us eight fifteen p.m. Eastern time. Thanks for being a part of our ever campus.